Well, first of all, what has shaped our understanding of wearing off is not in any way recent. It's something that was noticed with the first introduction of lipidopa in the 1960s and 70s. But we've clearly made progress in realizing that uh, the pathogenesis of wearing off is complex. It does include pharmacokinetic factors related to levodopa itself. It does include factors that are related to gastrointestinal transport of the drug. It does include factors that are related to blood-brain barrier transport and maybe also complex pharmacodynamic changes that occur in the brain itself. And what we've learned recently, more recently, to that is that wearing off clinically is more complex than it was originally being thought of or conceptualized as i.e. a motor phenomenon with recurring Parkinson, Parkinsonism towards the end of an interdose interval while we now know it does include a whole range of non-motor features making it a very distressing condition for patients. The management of wearing off basically is focusing on attempts to make the delivery of levodopa or the dopamine derived from levodopa more continuous such that we, such that we would avoid fluctuations in levels, not in blood so much but in the brain where we know that with these intermittent dosings of oral levodopa we will get ups and downs of striatal dopamine levels in the end of the day and that's unphysiological, brain doesn't like it and treatment focuses on smoothing that out and that does include manipulations at the oral drug regimen side, simple things like reducing the interdose interval thereby increasing the dose frequency but also changes to the pharmacokinetics of the drug formulation i.e. developing which is still ongoing extended release formulations of levodopa in particular and they're using enzyme inhibitors like MAOB inhibitors and COMT inhibitors to prolong the half-life of levodopa, increase the bioavailability and thus smooth out these fluctuations. And then of course there are more complex stages of the problem where we need to resort to more quote-unquote invasive therapies including pump options where the drugs are being delivered either subcutaneously or through gastrointestinal pump systems and eventually in, in the most resistant cases where we're now using even deep brain stimulation procedures to, to smooth out the problem and um, the complexity is to find the right strategy for every single patient that suits patient needs best and is the most acceptable to patients. Well, the most important unmet need is that we do not have a treatment that will, in a non-invasive fashion, I'm excluding deep brain stimulation here or pumps that will completely eliminate wearing off. So whatever we do at the non-invasive oral pharmacotherapy side it will always result in a bit of remaining wearing off problems. Um, things like using and increase dose frequencies or slow release formulations or enzyme inhibitors, COMT inhibitors, adding dopamine agonists with long half-life, these will all result in improvement but there's never going to be a perfect situation and that's the major unmet need to find non-invasive ways to get to zero to have no wearing off at all and currently we do this by combining things uh, but I think there is an unmet need to find a strategy that will be user-friendly, easy to do, non-invasive, that just eliminates it.